Hi, everyone. I'm Carrick. And for today's class, I have something a little bit different from uh, many of the other ice water yoga classes. Um, most of the ice water yoga classes, we focus on challenging you and you know, even pushing the boundaries a little bit so that you get more flexible and you get stronger, things like that. Um, and you know, finding calm and serenity in the face of the adversity, the challenge of the yoga practice is a great way to uh, reduce stress and to, to get better at this practice. However, today I have something very different. Instead of focusing on pushing and working harder, today is all about relaxing more. So it's all about um, moving out of the um, sympathetic nervous system, which is really your fight or flight response, which as athletes and business people and even just anyone who uh, goes outside and interacts with the world, um, we're constantly um, prepared, we're, we're on, so to speak, we're prepared to, to get things done, to rush from appointment to appointment, that's the flight, um, or to get out of harm's way, that's flight, or we're ready to, you know, to do battle, whether it's on the field, uh, in the boardroom, um, or fighting traffic, right? So that, that's the fight response. So fight or flight is kind of our, we're, we're in that pretty much all day, every day. And then being able to um, move into the parasympathetic nervous system, um, it's the part of our bodies that relaxes. Uh, it relaxes us like as we're ready to go to sleep, relaxes us as, you know, when we're eating. Uh, when you're doing those things like laying down in bed or, or you're eating a meal, um, you, you have to kind of turn off some of those things. You have to turn off the, the fight or flight so that you can take the time to eat or to get ready to sleep. Um, and so what we're doing here is we're practicing getting into that parasympathetic nervous system. We're practicing um, relaxing, which, you know, as athletes, many of us, or, or again, business people or, or just people moving throughout the world, uh, you know, within the world, um, we're good at, at, you know, pulling ourselves together, um, you know, even revving ourselves up or psyching ourselves up. Uh, getting ready for the big game, the big presentation, the big day. Um, and sometimes we're not as practiced at, you know, coming down, um, relaxing and, and just allowing the body to, to shift into that other, other state. And so all of these poses today are designed just for that. So you might not feel big stretch in these poses. You're definitely not going to get stronger. You're not going to hold or be tense in the poses. It's all about relaxing as much as possible. So um, the, the name of the game is to, to be as comfortable as possible as well. So you might find that you need to modify the way that I'm doing some of the poses. Um, and then as I turn to my props here, I've got, um, this is a yoga bolster. Um, you can find these online. Um, they're pretty expensive. I, I think they're probably around 75 to $100. Um, so, but, but you can always use, uh, household items. You just use pillows. Um, you know, the, the more firm you can make that pillow. So you can like overstuff the pillow case with like two pillows. Um, you want the, the bolster, the support. So really all this is, is it's a support for your body. Um, it's a little soft, so I'm not using like a big brick or anything. I want it to be a little soft because my body's going to lay on it quite a bit. Um, the other couple of things that I have, um, I have blocks. Um, in lieu of blocks, um, I've used things like um, Amazon boxes. Um, you know, the, the A3 box, if, if you order from Amazon all the time, you know which one I'm talking about. It's about this size. You can, you can fill that box with newspaper and, and it makes a pretty good block. Or, or you can buy these blocks pretty cheap um, online as well. Uh, and then the last two things, um, I'm sure you all have blankets at home. These are kind of yoga blankets. They're these uh, Mexican style blankets um, you, can, you can buy, um, again, online, or, or you can just use what blankets you have. So you're going to have to be a little bit creative um, to do this, and then having your yoga mat handy will be helpful as well. As we do these poses today, I'm not going to teach through the whole pose like I normally do. So usually when I have you in a a warrior pose, you are getting a ton of instructions from me on how to align. I'm going to help you align, uh, hopefully get you pretty comfortable to the point where you can relax. And then I'm going to shut up because 
um, in order to really drop into that parasympathetic nervous system to relax, um, you're not going to want to focus on my voice. Um, I'll give you some other things to maybe think about or to help you relax your mind, some little pointers. Um, but I, I'm not having you focus on, on my voice. I'm not going to guide you, you know, through a meditation or anything. It's going to be pretty quiet. Um, I'll be here doing the pose. We're going to hold each pose for roughly five minutes. Actually, not roughly five minutes. For exactly five minutes, I have a timer on my phone. And we're going to time each um, pose for five minutes, which is actually very short for... These are called restorative poses, um, as opposed to the the physical poses that uh, we usually do. The restorative poses, five minutes is actually a very short amount of time. My wife is a, a restorative teacher. And she would roll her eyes at me if I told her I was doing poses for only five minutes. She'll say that it takes 10 minutes just for the body to relax enough to drop into the parasympathetic nervous system. And then she'll hold uh, her students in the pose for another five minutes. So usually if you take a restorative class, like in a yoga studio, in an hour and 15 minute class, say a 75 minute class, you might only do four poses. You're in each pose for 15 minutes. And then you're transitioning a little bit from pose to pose. Um, just the teacher's helping you get into a pose. That's what I mean by transition. All right. So here's the first one. This is, um, this is my wife's favorite pose. She um, does this all the time. And, and I love this one too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, bolster. And then, again, you might be using a pillow. Um, and I'm going to prop the bolster up with the two blocks and the first block is set at the lowest setting, and then the second block at the highest setting. I'm trying to get close to a 45 degree angle. I'm making myself a recliner, okay? And then I'm going to use the blankets. You have the option to use the blankets or not. I'm going to back up until my hips hit the edge of the bolster, and all I'm going to do really is I'm just going to lie back on the bolster. Um, If you have the blankets, um, Here's what the blankets are for. Bring your feet together and then just draw them into a place that's comfortable. You don't have to pull them all the way in. Like I can pull my feet all the way into my hips, but then I start to feel a stress um, and a stretch in my inner groins. I'm not looking for that. So we're not trying to stretch the body uh, in the restorative poses. We're really trying to relax the body, relax the muscles, right? Let them um, relax for a little bit. So what the uh, blankets are for I'm actually going gonna, gonna to roll them, and then I'm going to use the blankets and wedge them under uh, my outer thighs and my shins. So that um, I don't have to work to keep my legs up. I don't have to uh, squeeze them in. Uh, I can just let them relax on the bolsters. And, um, and if I, if I didn't have the blankets, then the, my knees would go out and I would start to feel a stretch in my inner groins. So I'm, I'm choosing a position where I'm not stretching and I'm not engaging at all. I want to be completely supported. So the restorative poses, you are completely supported really um, in your entire body. Okay. So my hips are just are on the ground. They're supported by the ground. I have a little curve in my low back and then I'm just laying back on the bolster um, and then my arms are just comfortably by my side. Okay, I'm going to start the timer now. So hopefully you're set up. Um, if you don't have the, some other options are to stretch the legs out and then let your feet go to about outer hip width apart. If you, again, if you have the blankets, you can just support so that the, the feet will fall open, but they don't go all the way out because that might stretch your inner thighs. Again, the, the inner groins might stretch, so you can support the legs with the, the blankets. I really like the feet together, so I'm going to go to this position. But you could have your feet out in front. Um, Again, you really don't want to feel like you're stretching anywhere. You want to feel very supported by um, all of your props. Um, Okay, so I'm going to start a timer, about five minutes. And then you'll hear, um, it's like a little chime uh, from the timer, and that will start. I'll I'll talk for a little bit as we... um, as we get into the pose and give you some suggestions on how to relax. Okay, so here's the timer. <laughs> that is not the sound that I thought it was going to be. Wait. Okay, it's the wrong timer, that's why. All right, one more time. It's like a boxing bell. Here we go. 
Okay, so five minutes. Please close your eyes and, and relax. So there's, there's nothing to do here. You're not even trying to control your breath. So relax your breath. Just go to a natural breath. Allow yourself to be breathed. And I'll give you a little bit of instruction for about a minute, and then I'm going to let you relax um, without my voice getting in the way. So let everything get heavy. So if your legs are supported by um, blankets, allow your legs to smush into the, the blankets. Allow them to get heavy into the blankets. And then the blankets almost feel like they rise up to support you. Let your feet be really heavy into the mat. Allow your hips to get heavy into the mat. And then think of your heart as being really light, like it's floating on a cloud, like the bolster behind you or your pillow behind you is a cloud. And you're just being lightly lifted, like you're floating on that cloud. Let your hands be heavy. You're not trying to hold them into any position. Please turn your palms up if they're not. Let your shoulders get heavy around the bolster or the, the pillow. And then let your head be supported by the pillow as well. Listen to your breath. Again, you're not trying to control it. It's just a natural breath. But listen to it. Just listen to the sound of the breath. Maybe it sounds like an afternoon breeze moving through a tree, or it sounds like ocean waves lapping at the shore. Just something calm, something very steady. Listen to your breath. Again, you're not trying to control it. Just listen to it. We'll be here for another four minutes or so.
Just start to deepen your breath. Move your fingers and your toes. And then if your knees are wide, draw them together at the top and then roll a little bit to your right. Support yourself with your hand and come up. Okay, so um, let's shift gears a little bit. So the idea is not to fall asleep. Um, That is not a restorative pose. That's just sleeping. Um, So the intention is to be conscious while you drop into the parasympathetic parasympathetic nervous system, right? So um, you're aware of your breath. You can do things like count. You can count your breaths. Um, It's nice to have the timer so that I know when to come out. I'm not worried about like how long I've been in the pose. That five minutes for me went very quickly. Um, The other couple other things that I was thinking um, that you could do, you know, right now uh, here in this class, I have bright lights on me and um, it's stimulating my eyes. Even with my eyes closed, I can, I can see the lights. So uh, I do suggest maybe dimming the lights if, if that's an option for you. Uh, turn the lights down. Find a quiet place to do this. So this is probably not the best practice to do uh, in the gym uh, or you know, right after practice or right after a game. You, you probably want to be somewhere where you feel comfortable and safe. And then the the other thing is um, if you have headphones and you want to put music on, um, that would be appropriate as well. You can listen to, you know, like something calming. So you don't want to listen to something with, you know, an an upbeat tone or, um, you know, a driving bass, uh, something that preferably without a beat, um, just sort of background music that will help to relax you. Um, and that can help too. It can help to give you something to listen to and to focus on and to make the time pass. But again, um, choose something that is, you know, it shouldn't be something where you're like singing along with the lyrics or um, it's reminding you of something else. So the the point is not to um, like think of something else or um, kind of pull your mind into something else. The idea is really to relax the mind as well as the body. So um, keep that in mind as you make uh, those selections. Okay, so here's the next pose. Um, You can put blocks aside. You could actually use the blocks for this next one. So this next one is a supported bridge pose. Um, I'm going to move the bolster right here, uh, and I'm going to um, go right under my sacrum. My sacrum is the, there's a big flat triangular bone at the base of your spine and and you can feel it. Like, so if you play, if you run your hand down your spine, right at the bottom, there's a big flat bone. That's the sacrum. And you want the, um, the bolster uh, supporting the sacrum. It could be on a block. I prefer the, um, the bolster. You could also, if you don't have the bolster, you could put the block down. Um, I'll show you really quick. We could go block with a blanket over the block. I get pretty uncomfortable if my um, sacrum is on a hard surface. It it doesn't feel great to me. So then the the blanket provides that little extra um, cushion. Okay, so I can go block with blanket on top. Okay, I really like the bolster, so I'm going back to that. Okay, so bolster the cross the mat across the mat okay and then hips actually sacrum supported by the bolster and then knees knees bent feet a little wider than the knees and then um, let your knees fall together so that you're not you're not trying to support them or balance them at all um, you're finding a position that's very comfortable that allows you to relax so I'm going to go feet a little wider than my hips, and then I'll let my knees fall in. And then I'm going to start the timer, I think. You can have your arms just naturally by your sides. Turn your palms up just for a moment before we really start to relax. Wiggle your shoulder blades onto your back. Gather the bottom tips of the shoulder blades in, but allow the tops of the shoulders to broaden out. So wide, relaxed. 
And then once you gather the bottom tips of the shoulder blades in, you're not trying to hold them in for the next five minutes. Um, that's counterproductive right now. So now relax the upper back. Relax your head. Let your head get heavy into the mat. Again, close your eyes. Um, you could do each of these poses for a lot more than the five minutes that I'm doing them. Um, again, you know, and if you don't even have to do all of the, the poses, we're going to do five or six of them uh, in this class, but you could just do one of them a day for 15 minutes. Pick your favorite one. If one of these really allows you to soften the body and relax more than the others, pick your favorite and just do your favorite one for 10, 15, 20 minutes a day. And then just, you could even cycle and rotate to the next pose if you're just doing like one restorative pose a day. And that would be a great practice. That'd be so beneficial to, to be able to relax the body um, every day. Soften your breath so you're not controlling the breath at all. You're allowing yourself to be breathed. If you hear your thoughts in your head or your mind starts to race, imagine that you could just slow the thoughts down. So you're not trying to stop them. Just slow them down. Think a little more slowly. If your thoughts seem really loud in your head, again, it's, for me, it's really hard to stop thinking. But like, I can quiet down the thoughts a little bit. I can turn the volume down so that my thoughts are not yelling in my head, they're whispering. And then as the, my thoughts die down, slow down and quiet down, and I can, I can feel my body start to relax along with the mind. The body and the mind are connected. So as the body relaxes, the mind will relax. As the mind relaxes, the body will relax as well. So if one gets agitated, it's very likely that the other will get agitated as well. If one body or mind relaxes, it's very likely that the other will relax too. Be here for another four minutes or so. Just deepen the breath a little bit. And then wake up your hands and your feet, wiggle them. Roll to your right. 
and then push up. Okay, um, turn the bolster or your pillows to one side. Um, another way to do this, um, you could have the, the blocks. So if, if you happen to have the yoga blocks, you could have the blocks like this and then cover them with the pillows uh, and or cover them with the blankets. So um, be creative as you create this shape. The, the bolster is kind of the ideal shape, but it's not the only thing that will work. As long as you're comfortable and you're able to relax, um, that's good enough. Okay, so uh, the next pose is a supported twist. And again, I want to remind you that, um, I'm going to go this way, actually. I want to remind you that it's, you'll feel a little bit of a twisting, but it's supposed to be more relaxing. It's not going to be your deepest twist. Uh, same with the, the supported bridge that we just did. It's a little bit of a back bend. Um, which helps to open the heart, and, and hopefully as your heart opens, it, it relaxes you. Um, however, it's not going to be your biggest back bend ever. All right, so I'm going to sit with my um, left thigh against the bolster, and my feet kind of stacked. I don't have to be right on top of one another. I can offset my legs just a little bit. I'll show you from this side. So... One thigh up against the bolster, and then the other leg is just kind of comfortable on top. It does, you don't have to squeeze the legs all the way in. This is, I'm working a little too hard here, so I'm just going to offset my knees, um, and one hip is on the bolster. Okay, I guess I'll do this side first. You can do any side you choose. Um, and then your upper body is going to uh, lay over the bolster, and you have a couple of options here. So your hips are facing the side of the mat, um, legs are just relaxed, and the hip up against the bolster. And then your upper body is draped across the bolster or your pillows. And you can just close your eyes here. Now, if you want more, and I don't know if I actually do, you can twist, you can turn your head and look the opposite way. This is a lot more intense for me. So honestly, for today, I'm, I'm not going to turn my head. But if you're really comfortable, like if you can turn your head and just soften everything here. You're welcome to turn your head. It's a bigger twist. Um, this is still twisting. My upper body um, and my chest are square over the bolster. And then uh, I'm just not turning my head. Um, I feel like that's maybe a little bit too much for me right now. I have, um, I have a little upper back injury that it's stretching a little more than I would like to. So if, if the position is stimulating you at all, um, you want as little stimulation as possible. And, and again, you're going to get a little bit of stimulation from the twist. You're going to feel it, um, but you don't want to get a lot of stimulation. Um, let's start. I'm going to hit the timer. You can have your arms just kind of naturally, let your elbows fall naturally by your sides, and then palms down uh, on the both sides of the bolster. And close your eyes again. And then soften the breath. You can put yourself, um, imagine yourself in someplace restful. So uh, I always think of the, the Adam Sandler movie, Happy Gilmore, when he's, um, he's a golfer. And, well, he's, a, he's an ex-hockey um, player trying to be a golfer. And then part of his problem is when he's putting, he is engaging or he's overstimulated and he can't relax enough to, to make the putt. And so he puts himself in, in his happy place um, before he, he does each putt, which seems it's really corny in the movie. You see him, I don't know, it looks like he's up in the clouds or something. And then there's all kinds of things going on, things that he likes, like beer and... Uh, there's a woman, his, his girlfriend in the background, uh, and all of these things that he enjoys, but they stimulate him. So like, uh, that's not what we would try to be doing. We're trying to, you know, think of a happy place, quote unquote, but not a stimulating place. So someplace where you would relax. So maybe that's sitting in your favorite chair. You could imagine uh, just lying in bed. 
You could imagine being on a, a lazy beach or out in the park or something. And all those things might sound really corny, but if you can put yourself in a place where you would feel comfortable and very relaxed, um, it could really help to relax the body. So again, the, the body follows the mind and the mind follows the body. So mentally, if you can put yourself somewhere, your body maybe follows. Let the breath be soft. And then you can do a scan of your body if you feel any place where you're holding tension. Pull your breath to that space. It's almost like you're melting the tension with the breath. Pull your breath to anywhere you, where you might be gripping. So right now for me, my left shoulder, I can feel myself trying to hold it up. So I'm going to breathe into that space and then melt the shoulder with the breath. Be here for another few minutes. Slide your hands back and then gently push yourself up. We're just going to switch to the second side. So the, the other hip up against the bolster. It's really the side of my thigh. And then I have my feet offset again. We're just moving to the second side. Again, uh, actually, if you turned your head to complete the twist, do that again. If you didn't... Um, Keep your head facing the same direction as your knees. So whichever position you chose on the first side, just for balance, let's choose the same position. And I'm going to start the clock again. Close your eyes and allow the breath to be soft. I find that as I relax more and more that sometimes my, my sinuses start to close up. Um, you know, I think that when we're in that fight or flight mode, when we're ready to run or, you know, move the body, uh, we have to be able to breathe and take in a lot of oxygen. And then when we relax, I find that my sinuses kind of close up a little bit. So like at some point during a restorative class, 
I find that it gets a little more challenging to breathe and it kind of forces me to soften the breath, to, to sh- make the breath a little more shallow. I'm not sure if that happens to everybody or if that's like a, a, a natural response to the restorative poses, but I find that um, that happens to me quite often. And then, and then the sinuses open up again and it gets easier to breathe. Um, I don't usually have that happen in a regular yoga class. It's kind of like um, when, sometimes when you have a cold, you're sick. And when you, if you're like just a little bit sick and you're still, you know, going to work or uh, you're still training or you still are moving out and about outside of the house, like the cold seems to go away a little bit when you're, when you're active. And then when you get home, as soon as you close the door and you flop down on the couch, then the cold comes back uh, because your body relaxes and then, and then the cold has a chance to like uh, insert itself again. And I think that's similar to what's happening with my sinuses. Like, so uh, sometimes relaxing at first can make us more susceptible to things like colds um, or even something like the sinus is closing up. But then I think that we, we can get to a point where we, we drop into that parasympathetic nervous system. We relax enough that um, the body then can, you know, the cortisol levels go down, stress hormones go down. Um, the body can relax and then start to repair itself and move into a more comfortable state. And that's where we're trying to get. Rest deeply for another few minutes here. Slide your hands back and draw them slightly in, and then push your way back up. Facing the bolster or whatever you're using for support, um, line up your knees with the edge of the, actually, yeah. So knees just around the end of the, the support, and knees wide, about as wide as the mat, and then toes, you can have your toes touch behind you or you can take them wider. Um, Whichever feels more comfortable. We're going to do a supported child's pose. So um, you're just going to lay down on the, on the bolster. About halfway through, I'll have you turn your head the other way. So this is just a little bit gentler. 
Uh, we're going to neutralize those twists um, lying over the bolster, but I'm not going to have you have your face straight down. You're going to turn your head to one side, and then halfway through, we'll turn the head the other way. You can wrap your hands around the, um, the support, so just gently hands around. Turn your head to one side, and I'm going to start the clock again. So find a comfortable position for your arms. And while you're in the pose, um, you can scan your body again from head to toe. First scan for any differences between the left and the right. Is one side higher or holding tension? Is one side a little more active? Is one side lighter? And then create an equal heaviness. Like if you feel a lightness in one side, allow that side to be just as heavy as the other side. So let gravity take over. Let gravity pull you towards the earth. You're not resisting it at all. And then as gravity takes over and pulls you down, you can feel the earth rising up to meet you. And then that's the support. The support comes from the earth. The support comes from your support, the, the bolster or the blocks or the blankets or the pillows or whatever you might have. And then allow yourself to be supported. We're so often relying on ourselves to hold ourselves up, to hold it together. Uh, and then, so this is a practice of just the opposite of relying on something else to support us. L quite literally, the ground, the earth, the, the props. And it really becomes a practice in um, letting go and not trying to control everything. We can't control everything that happens in life. We can only do so much. We have to relinquish control at times to teammates, classmates, peers, coworkers, family, and friends. There are times where we have to rely on them. And even though you're not relying on any specific person right now, it is a practice of letting go of relying solely on yourself. So allowing this practice to rise up to meet you, to support you, and just letting go of holding yourself up, of pulling it together. Just let everything be heavy and supported by something other than you rest for another few minutes. as gently as possible, turn your head the other way. And then as quickly as possible, just soften and relax. Come back to that supported state.
and he'll come up. Um, on many of these poses, um, you can always elevate the pose to make it a little bit easier. So I could, um, in this particular pose, the supported child's pose, I could go to um, something like this. And this is gonna be a little more gentle than folding all the way forward. Even just in the five minutes, I could start to feel my hips um, stretch a little bit. So I, I was starting to feel a little bit of sensation in the hips in, in that. So if, if I was in that pose for another five or 10 minutes, um, which I don't do this pose very often for that long, um, I, I might have considered pulling myself up a little bit so there wasn't as much of a, a hinge in my hips and that, and that would support me more. Um, so you can always lift these poses up. You could stack two bolsters on top of each other or I could lift the bolster on top of a block. Um, this would have also been a little bit gentler for me. Um, so there's, there's a lot of room for variation in the poses, you really want to feel as supported as possible. So I encourage you to um, explore and play. And the, the longer you hold these poses, the, the more you're going to want support. So at five minutes, this was great. It was about the perfect amount of time for me and I was ready to come out after five minutes, to be honest. Um, any more than that, and I think I would have started to feel it in my hips quite a bit. Okay, one more pose that you're hopefully at least a little bit familiar with Shavasana, uh, which means corpse pose. And I'm gonna show you how to really support Shavasana. So with my blanket, okay, so very often Shavasana is just lying on the mat, okay, flat on your back, um, and then feet about as wide as the mat, hands a little bit, uh, about as wide as the mat, a little bit wider, and you let the feet fall open and the, you turn the palms up, get your shoulder blades onto your back, and then you just relax, okay? And, then, and this is Shavasana. Uh, it means corpse pose. And so at the end of a practice, the symbolism is that we die, um, po pose of the corpse. Um, and then, you know, when, when we let the body go, when the body dies, then um, spirit can rise, right? The, um, that inner light can, can shine more brightly. Uh, and then symbolically, physically, um, we die, okay? All right, so then, uh, you know, and if you're only in Shavasana for a couple of minutes, it's probably okay to just lie flat on the mat. Again, if you're gonna do this for any length of time, 15 minutes lying flat on my back, I will start to get sore. So um, if I'm going to do a, a relaxation pose, um, I'll, I'll support myself. So bolster under the knees um, for support. And I'm going to try to keep my heels on the mat so um, they're a little bit supported. A um, couple of things that I could do is if, if letting the feet go out starts to stretch um, the inner thighs and you, your, your hip flexors are really tight or the inner groins, the adductors are really tight, then you, you might want to just prop your feet up um, with blocks. Again, I, I could cover the blocks with something like a, a blanket so that it's like this block is pretty um, hard. It's a nice solid cork block, um, but it, it feels okay. I'm going to be okay for five minutes. And then with the, the, the blanket here, I'm going to roll up the blanket um, to create a little support for my neck. And then I'm gonna rest my head on the edge of the blanket here, rather than having my head like on the hard floor. Um, and again, I, I can do it for five minutes, but if we're gonna be here for longer, I just wanna give you some options. Okay, so here's the setup here. I'm gonna put the blanket, really the, the roll, it's not right under the, my neck. Um, it's a little bit lower than that. So if you run your hand, or down the back of your neck until you feel that like the big, there's going to be a big bone that sticks out um, from the spine. It's uh, C7. So it's the bottom cervical uh, verte vertebra, vertebrae. All right. So you run your hand down and you'll find C7. It's the big one that's sticking out. And then I really want the, the support to support C7. All right. 
and then my head rests. I'm going to try to flatten this out as much as I can. And then hands by the sides. I don't actually like the blocks. It's not making me feel, um, it's not making me more comfortable, so I'm just going to get rid of them. Um, but you could support your feet. Mm, this is a little tricky, too. All right, so I'm supporting C7 and the, the lower part of my neck. And then my head is uh, pretty much in neutral. All right, feet about as wide as the mat. You can let your feet fall open. And then hopefully, like for me, the bolster is supporting my legs, so my feet are not flopping all the way open. And then I'm going to start the timer again. Last um, pose of this practice. Hands by your sides, turn your palms up. Just for a moment before you completely relax, draw the bottom tips of your shoulder blades in towards each other. And then soften. And then as you're in the pose, just breathe into the back of your body. So everything that's touching the floor or props, breathe into your heels the backs or the sides of your legs, your hips, your spine, the shoulder blades, the tops of the shoulders, the back of your head. Again, you can compare one side to the other. And if one side feels like it's holding any tension or somehow lifted and send your breath, pull your breath to that part of your body. Like you could melt tension. Like you could soften the muscles with the breath. Slow down your thoughts and quiet them. Let your body relax. So every muscle is soft. Nothing's working or trying to engage. You don't need to hold yourself up the props and the, the earth itself is holding you up. Allow your body to melt into the earth and allow the earth to rise up to meet the body. Enjoy the rest.
Move your fingers and your toes. Deepen the breath. And then reach your arms over your head. Easy stretch. Reach out through your feet and your hands. Draw your knees in and roll to the right side. Pause for a moment and then just feel your body. Hopefully a little more relaxed, a little softer, maybe even you feel a little heavier. So you're not ready to jump up and go for a run. Uh, you're not ready to get up and fight or train. You're just in this really relaxed state, heavy, soft. And take your time, push your way up to seated. Okay, so these are just uh, five different poses that you can practice. And really, it's all about practicing relaxing. Um, you can do, you can lengthen the time, um, maybe just do one pose at a time and extend the time to like 10 or 15 minutes if, if that's what you want to do. Um, you can kind of use this class as a reference, come back to it to see how to set up. It's really all about making yourself comfortable. So if what I did doesn't seem to be working for you and you figure out a way to adjust a blanket or a block that somehow helps you to relax more, then do that. It's, it's more about feeling supported and finding the best position for you to relax than it is about like getting the right alignment or the right props or, or anything like that. Um, and then similar with the timing, like if the timing works for you better just to do one or two for longer periods of time, you're welcome to do that. I just wanted to give you some ideas of different poses that you could do. And these are kind of the, some of the standard um, restorative poses. You'll, you'll see these in almost every restorative class. So these are like kind of top, I don't want to say that they're top five, but they're very common. Okay. All right, so thank you for practicing with me. Um, I know this is a very different type of practice. Um, you know, if you're anything like me, just that five minutes seems like a long time. Um, and because I'm not as practiced at it, right? I'm, I'm good at getting myself up and going and psyching myself up and revving myself up. I haven't been trained on how to wind down, right? That's something that maybe we don't get that um, as often uh, in our training um, wherever we are, school, work, uh, sports, right? So it, if this is challenging, uh, I understand, right? It, it's kind of supposed to be. And then uh, I promise if you keep doing it, if you keep practicing, it will get easier to find that relaxed state. All right, thank you for practicing with me. I'll see you next time.